Hello and welcome to the channel. This week we will be talking about a royal film, at least in name. So if you're interested in hearing more about Lomography Lady Grey, how to get the most out of it, what the community thinks of it, then please stick around. Quick one before we get started, if you like film photography and want to see more videos like this one, film reviews, tips and tricks, that kind of thing, then please do make sure you're subscribed to our channel and notifications are turned on. Thank you so much. Lomography Lady Grey is, dare I say it, Lomography's most normal film. And the reason that I say that is because it is black and white, it is ISO 400, and it has none of the quirks that we know from, for example, the Lomography Lomochrome range, where you shoot at different ISOs to get different colour shifts or anything like that. This is a relatively straightforward black and white film, which is fantastic. Of course, it does have a really interesting name, Lady Grey royalty to go with Lomography's ISO 100 film in the same range, Earl Grey. So the lady and the earl. Now I did ask Lomography just before filming this video why they chose to name their black and white films after British nobility ranks uh, and no one could quite remember straight away. They're going to do some digging and see by the time I've edited and published this video perhaps we'll have a definitive answer from them but frankly that's not as fun as uh, making up our own stories um, so how about you write your own story in the comments below why do you think Lomography called their black and white films Lady Grey and Earl Grey? Uh, write a story, it can be as fantastical, um, as witty as you wish and what we'll say is we'll give it 48 hours so by Wednesday uh, lunchtime, UK time the story with the most thumbs up as voted for by <laughs> you lot that person will win a three pack of uh, Lady Grey. But we digress slightly. Um, <laughs> so Lady Grey has been recently revamped. The packaging is now in this gorgeous snazzy orange. The new sample photos are on here as well so you can see exactly what this film will look like. And when you do look at those sample photos, and as we cycle through them throughout this video, you'll notice this is a very different black and white film to last week's Ilford Delta, for example. Lady Grey has moderate contrast, relatively moderate grain, it's pretty forgiving, it's pretty flexible. You're not going to get the clear, sharp clarity of something like an Ilford Delta, which gives you a very, very different look. When people review it on the site, they talk about it being quite smooth, quite retro, quite soft. So all of these kind of colours, you're thinking it will look a little bit more grey. <laughs> Maybe that's a clue, at least to the surname of the dear lady. It will look a little bit more grey than really strong contrasty, really sharp, really clear. Now people have also said that if they pull the film, so you shoot it at ISO 200 and then pull process it, that does improve the contrast a little bit, you do get slightly tighter detail, but frankly that's not what this film is all about, and of course feel free to, to try that for yourself, but for me this film is much more about putting it into a point and shoot and using it for some really fun, flexible street photography, for some family photography, and also embracing the lo-fi aesthetic that Lomography is known for. Now actually when I first started shooting film many moons ago, I got a Diana F120 camera, it's my first medium format camera very early on, and I was gifted some Lady Grey in 120 as some of the first rolls, which I'm putting up now, and I had a ton of fun with that combination. Now, not great art, I'm sure you'll agree, but a load of experimentation, long exposures, double exposures, getting the shutter speed wrong, screwing up the winding, all of the fun that happens when you first learn. But this film took it all in its stride and gave me some images that I am uh, extremely fond of all these years later. So what I'm gonna do with my role from my Wonderbox uh, this week is put it into a camera that is going to match that relaxed, that fun aesthetic. So one of my point and shoots, maybe a camera or a lens with a little bit of personality of its own, shall we say, because I know that what this film is gonna give me is it's just gonna give me some, some great photos, some lovely photos. It will be able to cope with 
different exposures. I'm not gonna have to worry too much about nailing it perfectly as with some of the technical films you have to do. So I am going to be able to point and shoot with a lot of fun things. That is definitely my plan. If you've shot it before, please do let us know below what your thoughts are. Do you agree with the look that I've been describing? Did you get different results from the sample photos? Again, any Instagram photos, any Flickr photos, all links, totally legitimate, I'd love to see them. One thing you will notice if you're home developing, and this gives a bit of a wink to which European manufacturer currently helps nomography with this film, although apparently that has changed in the past, it might do again. When you home develop it and you part the developer, it will come out green, which is a bit of a shock the first time you see it, but do not worry, you haven't got something wrong, you haven't accidentally put arsenic into your beaker or anything crazy like that. It is just a function of the film dye that is in there. That's it from me. If you're a Wonderbox subscriber, please do also let me know, along with your story as to why, sorry, historical accuracy of why it's called uh, Lady Grey. Please do also comment below what you think you're gonna shoot with it. Let me know as well the, the camera lens combination you're gonna do if you're gonna embrace the lo-fi or if you're gonna go the other way and actually uh, invest time trying to get as much clarity out of this film just as a bit of a challenge, as a bit of fun. That's what this is all about. I look forward to seeing what you guys create, as always. It's the most exciting part of, of doing this every week. Thank you so much and we will see you again next week.